Good afternoon. First of all, thank you very much to Energy and Mines for this opportunity. Um, okay, let's see. Okay. First of all, a brief introduction about Enel and Enel Green Power. Uh, Enel is one of the biggest European utilities. Uh, we are vertically integrated. Um, we have a lot of network assets, more than 40 billion, uh, more than 60 mil million of, of customer connected to our distribution grid. Um, we have nearly 18 million customer in the retail side. And uh, we have a generation fleet composed by 48 gigawatt of thermal generation and 36 gigawatt of renewable generation. Uh, footprint is uh, global. We are present in the, all over the world, I would say. Uh, talking about the renewable division uh, energy power, um, we are increasing our footprint. We are expanding our, our geographical uh, uh, footprint, and we recently entered Russia with our first uh, wind projects that have been awarded in, in the last tender. And also, we recently entered Australia. And we are really happy about that. We, we are about to start construction of our first uh, PV project in South Australia. Uh, that is, the, I guess, the biggest uh, ready-to-build PV plant with more than nearly 200 megawatts. Um, OK, talking about the renewable portfolio, um, the renewable division in analysis in charge of uh, every single generation asset with zero emissions. That's the reason why we are we have uh, all the large hydro portfolio of Enel under our management. But talking about uh, renewables as we know them, uh, we have nearly 11 gigawatt of installed capacity with more than six gigawatt of wind, uh, 1.2 gigawatt of solar. That would be in one year more than three, because we are currently constructing uh, a lot of solar capacity. In particular, uh, our biggest plant that is going to be a 750 megawatt plant in Mexico. So we are a big player, let's say. And, uh, and talking about the the trends, the, the, the renewable transition. Uh, I just wanted to point uh, to show a couple of slides about the last uh, new energy outlook published by Bloomberg Finance. And uh, this, this forecast uh, has been published three, three weeks ago, I guess, uh, contains a very interesting projections. Uh, so the 72% of, of the new investments in power generation are going to be allocated to renewables in 2040. Uh, wind and solar means nearly 50% of the installed capacity at that year, and 34% uh, of the electricity generation. So uh, Bloomberg Finance is, is forecasting a huge increase uh, of renewable capacity but not only that, also is, is showing uh, or is, is forecasting also a big transformation in the market structure. Uh, in particular for Australia, uh, the projection is that Australia is going to become in 2040 uh, the, one of the most decentralized market and is going to have the most diverse matrix in the world. Uh, with some, uh, I would say, uh, incredible uh, uh, figures like, for example, that 45% of total power capacity located behind the meter, um, or 65% renewables in the matrix. That means that uh, if we believe these projections, uh, the design of the markets as we know them now uh, are going to be completely different in the future, you know, to accommodate all that, that 
renewable energy, of course, they are uh, forecasting also a big presence of, of the, the batteries uh, in order to balance the, the operation of the systems. Uh, with respect to the, to the levelized cost, I mean, every curve in every uh, report is like that, so decreasing. Uh, but we have some uncertainties about that. Um, and uh, we don't know how we are going to arrive to the steady asymptotic uh, part of the curve for some technologies. So uh, it's a very long-term projection. Uh, of course, we have room to improve uh, CapEx, uh, but maybe it's not it's not a matter of, of the decrease in the levelized cost, but a matter of the next technological disruption that is going to, to make uh, the renewable energy cheaper. So we are a, a global player, and uh, in the commercial office, in the business development division, uh, we are in charge of negotiating PPAs, basically. Uh, uh, PPAs, we, we prefer to call it solutions. Uh, how we approach these, these partnerships with the, with the industrial companies, with the, with the mining companies, um, we have two concepts here, case by case and tailor-made. There's no other way. So we are global. We have to deal with very different regulatory schemes, very different market rules, very different uh, uh, project portfolios, very different uh, uh, customer needs. So at the end, what we have to provide is a range of solutions. So in the last years, we have organized uh, uh, internally, Enel Group uh, has been reorganized in order to be able to provide a wide range of solutions. Uh, so we are part of the renewable division, but in fact, we are working together with uh, other units of Enel Group uh, in order to, to provide not only projects, not only generation capacity, but also energy management skills, trading, hedging, um, and a wide range of solutions, not only based on utility scale plans uh, connected to the grid <coughs> with off-site PPAs, but also on-site, off-grid plants, microgrids, energy efficiency, demand response, uh, etc. Uh, we recently uh, acquired uh, uh, an American company called Enernoc that is also present here in, in Australia, devoted to demand response. At the beginning of this year, we also made an acquisition of another American company called Demand Energy, also devoted to microgrids, uh, industrial business solution based on solar storage. Um, so we are betting for this transformation. Uh, from the Enel Group, we, we have um, uh, invest a lot of effort, money, and resources in order to face the new challenges of the new energy paradigm, let's say. Uh, so now we are a big group working together with different skills. Uh, so we have been able to make some uh, good results last year. We built in, in 12 months, more than two gigawatts of installed capacity worldwide. Um, we have been first mover in, in the growing markets, um, and we have some levers in order to, uh, to provide our competitive advantage to the customers. And the levers are basically uh, these six uh, concepts let's say. So we have a, a diversified portfolio. We have nearly 20 gigawatt of, of uh, project portfolio worldwide. Um, we have access to good financing conditions, of course not as good as we uh, uh, would request for some particular markets, countries, or projects, but uh, we are a big group. We have uh, a lot of uh, access, let's say, to funding. 
uh, we have uh, a very large development team uh, working locally. Uh, so we have just opened our office here in Australia, in Sydney. So um, now that we are present in Australia, we are uh, putting a lot of resources in the country. So we, uh, we used to open the countries and then invest a lot. Uh, our engineering and construction department uh, is huge. Um, and we have this uh, competitive advantage that we are one of the best clients of the panel, the solar panels manufacturers, wind turbine manufacturers. So uh, the procurement side is one of the, of, of the levers that we, um, in, in which we, we leverage our, our competitive advantage in order to provide good prices and competitive capex to our projects. Uh, and we also invest a lot in the operation and management side. Um, we do our own preventive manage, uh, maintenance. Uh, we have invested a lot in big data technology in our control centers in order to analyze, uh, uh, develop new SCADA systems. So we believe that control and software tools are key in order to uh, have uh, or, or take advantage of, of the economies of scale. And of course we have, as a big utility, um, that energy management part based on the unique portfolio management. So we are uh, assessing and managing the risk of the portfolio uh, from a unique perspective. So the, all the generation assets are positioned in the retail side, et cetera, is managed um, from one and only uh, unit. And, uh, and we have also a large trading team devoted to commodity hedging, etc. So all these capabilities, of course, with all these capabilities, we can approach the structuring and pricing of solutions, solutions uh, for mines, uh, trying to really apply those two concepts, case by case, case by case, requires a lot of resources. We are big, we are large. We can um, allocate those resources uh, in order to analyze a lot of opportunities at the same time in very different countries and market. And also in order to, to, to do it, uh, as, we, as I said, tailor-made. And when we talk about the process, of course we have to take into account a lot of external factors. We have been talking uh, this morning, this afternoon, about the, the, the mining obstacles and needs, uh, the difficulty of, of presenting these opportunities to, to the top management, uh, the, the uh, slow processes, uh, governance, approvals, etc. the mindset that should be changed in order to uh, accept new uh, ways of doing businesses. Of course, we have to deal with the external factor, market structure, country uh, regulatory schemes, the, the available project pipeline. Once we assess those uh, needs and worries of the customer, of the client, of the mining company, and the particular local context, we can approach the definition of the business model and the negotiation of the agreement. And uh, I think that this morning, uh, all these issues have been commented. So the, the most mentioned word today, bankability. Um, so of course, we have different needs and different issues depending on the, the, the kind of project, the kind of mine. Each mine is unique, one of the uh, phrases that, that we heard before. Um, and we have many potential solutions. For the off-grid, on-site projects, of course, we have that uh, short life mine uh, issue that we have to solve. Of course, in the future, we will see those redeployable technologies. Uh, we have seen this morning that there are very uh, interesting initiatives. Today, maybe uh, they are not so mature in order to to be commercial, let's say, uh, uh, in the short term. We from Enel uh, 
we have our own testing fields for those kind of redeployable initiatives, but we are um, a little bit more conservative, maybe, uh, because our, our question this morning, the question was, who's going, going to be the first? Uh, our concern is who's going to be the second buying the plant five years after, uh, and that's, that's the, our real concern, who's going to be the second one uh, accepting the, the, the redeployable plant, uh, taking into account that probably the technology is going to be cheaper at that point. But we are analyzing that, those opportunities also, and we are going, I'm going to show afterwards uh, some of those initiatives. Uh, SRH, I agree, SRH is still very expensive, uh, but we have to test, we have to make some pilot projects, we have to explore. And regarding the outside, normal standard PPAs uh, for, for those mine connected to the grid, I would say that here in Australia we have a lot of room to improve and to uh, develop the, that dieted PPA market. Um, and uh, talking about flexibility, I think that tailor-made means flexibility. Uh, and of course, uh, we are starting to offer and to negotiate with our clients flexible structures in order to uh, improve the economics of the project um, for both parties, so capturing downsides and upsides, giving some comfort to the, to the mining company in terms of the, 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 the term of the contract, so more flexible pricing structure eventually could mean uh, that the mine is, is willing to embrace longer PPA term. So we are exploring those, all those things. And why? Because at the end, the negotiation of a PPA, of an agreement, is a matter of uh, finding uh, uh, the, the proper trade-off between price and risk. Conceptually, the buyer or the mining company is willing to, to, to pay a little bit higher price if the risk is lower. Uh, on the other hand, the project is willing to accept or, or is able to, to offer a lower price if the risk is lower for the project. But of course, we need to align the project uh, competitiveness to the price range of the mine. So it is a, a necessary condition. We need a good project, good capex, good performance, good resource. That's the first step. But then, even though we can be at the same price range, we need to accommodate both body risk aversion levels. So the risk aversion or the, or the risk sharing is, is key when we enter into that tailor-made negotiation. It's an iterative process. And of course, we have to take into account all the concerns. The mine has the concern of the technology getting cheaper uh, after four years. So maybe a long-term PPA is not a good idea. Or the, the PPA being out of the money because the market price is lower than, than the, 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 the price we fixed in the PPA two years ago. Uh, we have to find ways to uh, put in place flexible structure in order to accommodate and to give comfort uh, for those uh, concerns, always uh, respecting the bankability of the project. And that negotiation is an iterative process. It's not, it's not a linear process. And uh, just to mention some examples some of, of uh, uh, some real uh, negotiations that we have uh, uh, faced in the last, uh, the last year. For example, the credit support or termination amounts in a PPA. Uh, Frequently, the, the, the off-taker, the client, is not willing to put uh, a warranty or a big warranty, a parent company warranty, letter of credit. Uh, the termination amount is also a deal breaker in the negotiation. Uh, but once we enter into that detailed assessment, together with the lenders, together with the investors, uh, we can find out that 
with, a, with a higher credit support, we can get cheaper uh, financial costs. Uh, with more security in the termination amount, we can have lower requested returns from the equity partners. So at the end, the price of the PPA could, be, could compensate eventually the financial cost of putting a higher warranty. Of course, uh, um, there are a lot of other issues that should be taken into account, the accounting uh, uh, treatment, etc. cetera. But, uh, so what I mean is that it is worth exploring together with the mining company and with the lenders all these potential alternatives. Just not to discard from the very beginning uh, any solution. We have to calculate the economics and, uh, and be sure that, that we, have, we cannot improve the, the solution. Of course, talking about uh, flexibility, we are putting in place now different structure, call out structure, tracking accounts, in order to give comfort and accommodate those concerned about the PPA going out of the money before the end of the term. And having that, those skills regarding the trading, commodity trading activity uh, internally in, in Anal Group, we are now uh, beginning to explore with some uh, mining companies potential um, indexation to metals or even to diesel cost of, of part of the, of the PPA price. Uh, in case that the mining company has uh, its own hedging strategy, we could find eventually some synergies. Uh, and this could be also a good proxy hedging for the currency uh, risk. So we can improve a little bit the, the financial cost through this kind of indexation. So we know that the market is changing. Uh, we are not that kind of player that asking for a fixed price, CPI indexing, 20 years PPA. We know that we have to provide flexibility. We are working a lot with the financial institutions in order to get them involved uh, into these new flexibilities in order to properly assess uh, the risk. And, uh, and I think that this is the way in order to, to foster uh, uh, these kind of agreements uh, with the mining companies. And just to finish, uh, we really believe in testing uh, in learning by doing. This morning, uh, Arena uh, Ivor was telling that uh, learning is a matter of doing. So just three examples of our pilot projects that we used to connect with our sustainability targets. Uh, these projects are our CSV uh, v, uh, projects. We are sponsors of the Formula E, so we are the providers of the microgrid uh, uh, charging the, the, the cars of the Formula E. And we have a project that is going to be implemented at the end of this year in order to make the facility so solar panels, battery, uh, redeployable. So we are going to assay and to test um, uh, that uh, mobile solar uh, installation from one race to the next one. And then we are pretty active uh, in the microgrid side with a pilot project that, in fact, a part of being good, very good uh, uh, shared value creation projects are, in fact, uh, real testing fields in order to test new technologies. And the, we, I'm going to mention two of them. Uh, I'm going to start with, uh, for the last one. Uh, Cerro Pabellón is the, the first geothermal plant in South America. We have uh, built... 100 megawatt uh, geothermal plant in the Atacama Desert at 4,000 meters of, of height. So, and uh, uh, we put in place a microgrid uh, in the construction camp just to make the sustainable construction site. That is one of our efforts right now. And we decided to, uh, to test uh, a combination of uh, lithium batteries, hydrogen, I agree, with my colleague, with Michael, that hydrogen is not, is not performing very good. But, uh, but the, our intention was to test mainly the software, the energy management software, that learning machine tool 
uh, in charge of uh, dealing with the charge, discharge of the batteries uh, and the intermittency of the renewable energy. Um, and the other flagship project is the Oyawe. Oyawe is in, it's a little village in the, also in Chile, in the Atacama Desert. This is a project that we made uh, together with Freeport, uh, the mining company. Uh, and, uh, and we are going to see uh, a little video at the end. Uh, these are some slides about the, the construction camp microgrid that could be a good example or a good, a good testing field for some other construction field for new mines. Um, and regarding the Yahweh project, uh, I think that I'm going to end with this because it's, it's a project that we developed together with Freeport. Um, Ojawa is a, was a very poor community. Uh, they, they were running diesel groups just 10 hours a day, no electricity at night. And after uh, the implementation of this project, the electricity consumption has tripled, I guess. Uh, then you can buy an ice cream in Oyawe. It was something impossible in the past without electricity at night. And uh, I think that, Tom, please, if you can run the video. And, uh, and I think it's a good ending for my speech. Thank you very much. Yahweh lo caracteriza principalmente ser una comuna andina, estar enclavada a aproximadamente a 4.000 metros de altura, rodeada de volcanes y salares. Pues Yahweh era un pueblo de día. La energía era hasta las 2 de la mañana y posteriormente Oyahue quedaba en oscura. En el Green Power está desarrollando acá en Oyahue, en la segunda región de Chile, el proyecto denominado eh, Planta Híbrida Oyahue, la cual conjuga energías renovables no convencionales como energía fotovoltaica, son 1.538 paneles fotovoltaicos y una pequeña turbina eólica. Esto también eh, funciona con un respaldo de baterías, las cuales nos permitirán entregar energía al pueblo de forma continua. En paralelo estamos construyendo también dos generadores Trinum, son paneles solares también en forma de parabólica, las cuales eh, van a dar agua caliente para la escuela de Oyahue. La verdad es que esto inicia con todo un programa social que tiene en él, que la sustentabilidad no está solamente en el área tecnológica, sino que también en los aspectos sociales. Es fundamental para nosotros tener eh, la capacitación de las personas de la zona. Es un trabajo que sabemos que va a beneficiar muchísimo a Oyahue. En el Green Power ha visto esta necesidad, ha planteado un modelo de energía sustentable, eh, donde obviamente las personas de la comunidad van a estar trabajando directamente. Nos hemos hecho responsables tanto de estas mujeres que viajaron a la India en un programa que se llama Barefoot College. A pesar de ser un pueblo tan lejano, siempre me gustó aprender mucho más de lo que yo sé. Me arriesgué, corrí el riesgo y nos fuimos a la India. Fuimos a aprender a instalar paneles solares. En el Green Power está en ese propósito de seguir apoyándonos soy de las primeras personas que me gustaría seguir trabajando y aprendiendo mucho más. Una y tata y mamá y ayachivas no cataja, guaira nampa, que hay volcán, mara y achacucho. Y con una nampa, está volcán, que hay un patamán. Cajzuti, Fermina, Ramona, Paucar. Escuela Pim, que hay una niña así. Nunca va a hasta hoy. Entonces, Callarini, yo que ya chica en costumbres tradiciones de Rubaita, que ahí mando a invitar al campo, director, profesores, chanta, yo que acá, guabasta, ya chachini, que hay Oyahuip. La distancia es complicada y la altura también. Es complicado estar lejos. Los jóvenes, ellos normalmente tienen trabajos, tienen inquietudes, tienen la, la posibilidad de entrar a internet, pero con la energía limitada, ellos no podían hacer siempre eso. Entonces ahora tenemos la posibilidad de estar trabajando todo el día. Vamos a tener las 24 horas, agua caliente, y eso me facilita el trabajo. Pata Inti y Mamamuyo, Paikuna, 
ancha ta pampancha keima kukui tuta unanka agradecisun chay runa kunasta ollawi mancha munampa thank you very much